Hi there, let me help you learn how to subtract in Excel. Hey, I'm Sharon from Excel at Work, where we offer straightforward, non-technical assistance to help you save time, work smarter, and improve your Microsoft Office skills. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So, let's get to showing you how to subtract. It's simple when you're shown how, but keep watching to make sure you understand what happens when you multiply and subtract or divide and subtract in the same formula. This is a tricky one, so make sure you watch to the end. And once I've helped you master subtracting, to help you even more, I'll share with you a link to where you can grab our free self-assessment tool where you can gauge your current skill level in Excel and create your own personal learning plan to help you fill in the gaps. Right, how to subtract in Excel. Now I can take you through this really, really quickly. Um, what I want to do is I just want to talk to you about writing a formula. So if I just come and click into cell C4, um, and we're going to do a little uh, formula together. Um, now when you're writing a, a formula within Excel, whether you're doing uh, multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, you always need to tell Excel that you're about to do the calculation. And we do this by pressing our equals key on the keyboard. So find your equals key if you look down at your keyboard you'll probably find it top right next to your backspace key when you press equals you're now saying to excel hey i'm about to go in and do a calculation and it kind of sits up and takes notice now what we're doing here is we're going to take away or um, subtract the money that we've spent away from our budget now i watch a lot of people um, who do subtraction they will actually write the real numbers into a formula so i'm pressing my minus sign or my subtraction sign you can find this on your numeric keypad on your keyboard if you've got a numeric keypad some of us don't if we're using laptops um, if you're looking on a laptop look a couple of keys in right next door to your equals key actually you'll find your minus um, now it's you don't need a shift key with it that would give you an underscore just um, press it and you will find your minus now I could actually just type in these real numbers and once I've done that all I need to do now is hit enter and Excel will do the calculation for me so it's a little bit different from what we were taught at school um, the equals key comes first not at the end we perform the calculation by pressing enter so look at that immediately Excel does that for us and if you got your calculator out now and check that it would be correct um, now what I want to do is I just want to explain this yes it definitely will give you the calculation and it'll give you the result but wouldn't it be better if we kind of made a little bit different if we came back in and said oh no actually our budget was twelve hundred dollars it wasn't a thousand wouldn't it be great if we updated this over here and this updated automatically it'd be brilliant wouldn't it so I'm just going to press my delete key and delete that out and I'm going to start from scratch I'm going to press my equals key to tell Excel that I'm about to do a calculation. This time I'm now going to actually reference the cells holding the information, the $1,200. And I just clicked onto it and you can see it's just immediately put A4 into there. So I'm now pressing my minus sign on the keyboard and now I'm going to go along here and click onto B4. Now if you wanted to you could actually type in A4 minus b4 and you don't need uppercase a uppercase b um, i just like to click it's a little bit quicker now when i press my enter key i will actually get the correct amount now the beauty about this is when you reference cells instead of the real numbers should you update the cell watch this the number updates and that's the beauty of excel and of course now that we've written that formula you can see the result down here and you can see the formula that created the result up here so Excel's just reminding you that that value there has been calculated using A4 and subtracting what's in B4. So I hope you found that really, really helpful. So I'm now going to take you just one step further because it's really important that you understand when you're working with more than one operator or one more than one symbol, in this instance we're using the subtraction symbol, um, there is just one little key element that if you miss it, you will have rubbish calculations. So I'm going to come down here and just talk you through it. So this is a little bit different. We're going to do the same kind of thing, but I'm going to actually take it, the calculation one step further. So we're going to do equals. I'm going to go A8 minus... B8. In fact, let me just show you how you can actually type them. So if I just go A8 
minus B8. You'll notice I'm not bothering putting the uppercase in there. If I press enter, of course I end up with the, the correct calculation and see how Excel's fixed it for me. But if I want to now continue, now I can actually click, click up into the formula bar. I'm going to continue and put one more step into this calculation. I'm going to multiply it. So I'm using my asterisk for multiplication. Multiply it by 1.15. I'm in New Zealand and we have 15% GST. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the formula in that would add the GST onto my calculation. Now I'm pressing my enter key and I've ended up with a figure that is actually less than what we have up here. Seems a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> so let me explain to you what's happened. Unfortunately, when you have more than one uh, operator up here, you have to actually just stop and think and look at that formula and think what part of this formula needs to be calculated first. Now, there's a, there is a, a rule behind it called the bed mass rule or the ped mass rule. It depends on kind of bod mass. It depends on what school you went to. Um, and you could go and kind of reference that a little bit, you know, and look it up on Google if you wanted to. Um, but it goes like this. If you are looking at a formula and a certain part of that formula needs to be calculated first you put brackets around it this bit here needs to have brackets around the outside of it because what's happening is it, without the brackets Excel is actually whipping onto B8 and multiplying that by the 1.15 first then it's deducting the A8 now at the moment if you're going phew that's a little bit too much Sharon <laughs> don't worry about it all I want to say is that when you have got more than one operator, like you've got a minus or a plus or a division or whatever, in that formula, make sure that you bracket the first part of the formula that needs to be calculated first. That's it. That's all you have to remember. Now that we've put the brackets around the A8 minus the B8, Excel will do that part of the calculation first and then when it gets the result, it will then carry on and do the multiplication by 1.15. I'm pressing my enter key on the keyboard and now we have got something that looks a little bit better and if we just come up here and check that if I go up here and go equals that amount and I'm using my multiplication which is an asterisk and you can find that on shift 8 or on your numeric pad 1.15 pressing enter to do the calculation look we know that it's correct so I really hope you're feeling confident about subtracting in Excel now. Just remember to use cell references instead of real numbers if you're going to update the cells regularly and don't forget your brackets. Now, if you're really serious about improving your Excel skills and you'd love an idea of just what you need to know to become a more than proficient user of Excel, click the link on screen or the link in the description box below to grab your copy of our Steps to Becoming Proficient in Excel guide, a brilliant tool to use to assess your current skill level, identify gaps in your knowledge and learn where to find the info you'll need to fill in any gaps you have identified. Now, if this has been helpful, please hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. And if you use Excel and want to stay connected, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell because we're sharing new videos regularly. And if you know someone who would benefit from this help, please be sure to share this video with them. Hey, thanks for watching and have a fabulous day.